Hello out there in Adla land. Our class is Lili Nushes Rachaleah Basra Chaim Svi. Hello, Shalom. And we are concluding on this segment of honorable mention by discussing the mitzvah of rejoicing at a wedding. And also we'll talk about, to wrap it all up, the philosophy behind Chesed, the mitzvah of loving kindness. Going to a wedding, there are primarily two mitzvot that we must fulfill. The main obligation is to attend a wedding is even if there are not enough guests to convey a feeling of importance or happiness, or if I, you are such a close friend that your, importance is, your presence is so important that it will increase the happiness of the bride or the groom. If you don't fall within one of those two categories, but you are a friend of the grandparent or the parent, then their attending the wedding is a mitzvah within of loving your fellow person, but it's not a mitzvah, a special mitzvah of being sameach, chasmukah, making the bride and groom rejoice. Those are the two special exceptions. The primary purpose of attending a wedding is not to have a good time, not to enjoy the meal or the refreshments. The primary mitzvah is, is to bring the joy of a Torah life to the young couple. This is performed by speaking, by telling, if you can any which way endear the bride's family to the groom's family, the groom's family to the bride's family. Uh, talk about to the groom how wonderful the bride is, to the bride how good the groom is. These are things which is the most important aspects of the mitzvah. At a mitzvah, at a wedding, of course, you dance and you sing, but the main reward, says the Gemara, it's a Gemara in Brachos, Taf, Vav, and Beis, is the happiness of spirits through speaking, uh, to endear the families to each other. In particular, you have to make sure you don't defeat the entire purpose of going to a, mit, to a wedding by engaging in Lashon Hara. If you say anything which is detrimental, you totally defeated the entire purpose of attending the wedding. On the contrary, you have to do everything with your wherewithal to endear each other to each other, to endear each party to each other, and do whatever you can to make sure that this new family will get off the ground with a very established, firm, firm root. The importance of this mitzvah is certainly multiplied if you're talking about a disadvantaged couple, a couple which are either impoverished or low lane they are orphans. Then the mitzvah is compounded by attending their wedding and making them rejoice. It's a great mitzvah to help out uh, and help out with their needs, their financial needs. And the Mishnah says that there is no limit to the word providing assistance so that people can marry. It's only permitted to sell a safe retire for two reasons. And that is to provide funds for Torah study to help a needy person get married. Okay, and to conclude, and this is taken from the book of Rabbi Avram Ehrman, A Journey to Virtue. If you have a choice, you can only do one, comfort the mourners who are sitting shiva or going to a shiva brachot, you can't do both, then you should go to uh, comfort the mourners. That will have precedence. And now let's conclude this by talk, looking at the philosophy behind the whole idea of chesed. We've been giving examples such as visiting the sick, comforting the mourner, rejoicing at a wedding. Now we're going to look at the philosophy behind it all. And this is taken from the very profound book of Chief Rabbi Sir Jonathan Sachs, To Heal a Fractured World. The Chief Rabbi relates a story which I'd like to read to you, a story by Professor Stephen Carter, uh, I've seen this quoted several times. I'm going to read this to, to quotation. And this is it from uh, Professor Carter's book. In 1966, an 11-year-old black boy moved with his parents and family to a white neighborhood in Washington. Sitting with his two brothers and two sisters on the front step of the house, he waited to see how they would be greeted. They were not. Passersby turned to look at them, but no one gave them a smile or even a glance of recognition. All the fearful stories he had heard about the whites treated, how whites treated blacks seemed to be coming true. Years later, writing about those few days in his new home, he, he says, I knew we were not welcome here. I knew we would not be liked here. I knew we would have no friends here. I knew we should not have made the move here. And then he describes as he was having these thoughts that everything was a mistake, then all of a sudden, a white woman coming home from work passed by on the other side of the road. She turned to the children with a big, broad smile and said, Welcome! And then she disappeared into her house. She emerged minutes later with a tray laden with drinks and cream cheese and jelly sandwiches, which she brought over to the children, making them feel at home. That moment, the young man wrote years later, changed his life. It gave him a sense of belonging where he was not, there was none before. It made him realize that at a time when race relations in the United States were still fraught, that a black family could feel at home in a white area, and there could be relationships that were colorblind. 
Over the years, he learned to admire much about the woman across the street. But it was that first spontaneous act of, ge- of greeting him that became for him a definitive memory. It broke down all the walls of separation, and it turned strangers into friends. That young man, that man was Stephen Carter. He's now a professor of law at Yale University. He wrote a book which is called Civility, and he begins by describing the story with the woman across the street who was a religious woman, Sarah Kastenbaum. And this is how Professor Carter describes her. She was a religious Jew. In the Jewish tradition, he notes, such civility is called chesed, the doing of acts of kindness, which is in turn derived from the understanding that human beings are made of the image of God. Civility, he adds, itself may be seen as a part of chesed, It does indeed require kindness toward our fellow citizens, 